Okay, so today what I'm going to do is take a step back from the render system and the associated armature animation system stuff that I've been doing and just kind of relax by doing going back to a, a, a system or a, yeah, basically a system or a library that I haven't touched in quite a while and basically modernize it with all the things that I've learned, improved and developed over the past uh, apparently year on this uh, file since I've been doing a lot of work year to two years so yeah uh, there's probably definitely a number of things to do here yeah so and that is this is going to be the physics system so the first things first is I'm pretty sure I actually haven't been I'm pretty sure like the physics system just hasn't been working for a while or I disabled it or something because I Supposedly, if I recall correctly, in the persistent data set, I have uh, an object which has a mass, which means this should fall, and this, which doesn't have a mass. So this is the floor. This is the object. Oh, okay, yeah. I haven't been able to see this because there's no uh, render state associated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the render state, make sure that, that this or what I have already works, and then I'll start with the modernization and update process. So to begin with, uh, let me just grab a generic render state or something, one of the meshes, and add this. So this should be, and let's not put it quite so high, put it up to like 10 or so, and it'll fall down to zero, hopefully. Uh, and then, yeah, let's run it, see what happens. Uh, that went on the other monitor, but here it is. There is... I think that this is probably it. Let me just kind of move it down and see. Yeah, okay, so that's the thing. Noticeably or notably, it's not actually moving. That's a bit of a bit of a problem there. For sure. So why not? Obviously, this has been a little bit broken for a little while and hasn't been happening. So Let's see when I do initialize or no. When I try to add an object, let's see what goes on here. I am, there's two objects, two and three. Okay, so this will be the first one, which is going to have uh, a massive zero. So this is the uh, floor. don't really care about this one too much. And then this one will be the one with the actual mass. So what's going on in here? Okay, what I'm probably assuming is happening is the collision shape is found, but it doesn't actually exist, or it's not loaded at least. So it's being added to the awaiting loading resources list. Sorry. Wait a second, what? They're both the same object, I think. I think they're both using the same collision shape, which is 011. Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, hexadecimal 011. So on the first object, I presume this is the first one. The rigid body, mass of zero, okay. Load state is not that, great. It's unloaded, and it's not loading, so I request it to be loaded, and I say, hey, this entity is awaiting this re uh, a resource to be loaded. I carry on. I come back through. I now have the other with the mass, and I'm not adding it to be awaited. Because, okay, that's probably it right there. Because on the first time through, of course, it's both unloaded 
and it's not in the process of loading. So I don't actually, so, you know, I go into the load data and I add it to here. This should happen whether or not I actually request the load. It's just like this, I'm waiting like for something to load at this point. So yeah. Add this to the awaiting. So this is probably it right here. And what's probably happening is that when it uh, came through with the awaiting resources afterwards, is well that's not that wasn't on the list, and I've not I'm not modifying the rigid body uh, component, so it just never got the chance to re be re-added or modified or checked ever again. So oh yeah, there it is. It so it just came up. Okay, so that was it. My camera, either my camera or my world or something is upside down. Don't know which. Let me check the application. Up here somewhere, uh, when I create a window, I have the orientation of this. <clears throat> I don't know quaternion. I don't know if... This means why it's negative or positive. I'll I'll fix that offline in something else. It, it's not really important. The point is that the thing is now moving. That's great. So let's kind of stage that so I don't lose that because that's a pretty dang important bug fix. Okay, so let's take a look at the whole system as it stands right now. I have a resource. I have the collision shape. That's not, I'm not going to not going to touch that right now. I have the component, which is the rigid body, which has the mass and the resource ID of the collision shape. And currently has, okay, so like following on from the uh, <clears throat> stuff I did for the resource system, this is not only is this runtime only information that's in the base component, which could be exportable. It's also an implementation, it's a physics implementation specific piece of data, which obviously should not be here at all. So this is something I want to definitely move out of here. So after this, what should only be here is really the collision shape and the mass for the moment. And it probably adds some more information later. And the rigid body plus like the actual collision shape resource will be added onto much like with render system where there's a parallel uh set or vector of data of actual like current in use runtime data rather than all components you know the components that are within like a kilometer me in the and, and those with it you know a billion kilometers away from me all having rich you know pointers which may or may not be empty that's not a great idea that's a that's a large waste of uh space on a thing, especially like, because I'm only going to need a small subset of actual dynamic objects, you know, being dynamic or movable or whatever. So <clears throat> that's going to, that's going to have to go. So that's something I need to do back to the system, the system itself. Uh, um, the physics world is still here. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything with that right now. This is a C++ thing as well. I can probably uh, change this up. I can reduce the interface to just these functions plus a create and destroy. Probably actually get rid of the initialized. I don't use that anymore. And why do I provide the loader? Do I actually use, okay, do I actually use the loader here? Or is it just a uh, stub from uh, earlier? Okay, it looks like I don't actually use it. It's probably just like a, ha a holdover from the when I used to actually directly request loading from loaders themselves, rather than just saying, "Hey, you know, resource load yourself, resource," and it tri figuring out who to talk to to load itself. So that's obviously unnecessary. Let's get rid of that before, so I don't have to worry about that moving forward. So that's gone. Um, I don't need this for declaration. Which body dynamics resource. So yeah, a lot of like bullet dynamics and that, that's all going to be hidden in the source side after this, when I change it to an FFI. 
No one else needs to know about that, so get rid of that. Uh, the loader, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Same thing on the deinitialized side. That's gone. Again, I don't actually care about the initialized call like that. Uh, and of course, when I'm actually registering the thing, I need to not uh, pass that in. That also had a specific result that was associated with it, which was this. Get rid of that. From here too, and from the test. Yeah. So make sure that works, and then we'll stage it. Okay, there it is. Great. Let's check, no extra memory leaks. Nope. So stage these. Great. Don't need that. Close everything to the right. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to move a lot. Of the, I'm going to move the actual like um, I'm going to change to an FFI interface to get a lot of this uh, shifted to the source side, because again, like. As a user or downstream, you don't need to know this stuff. Oh, sorry, you need to know this stuff. You just don't need to know this stuff. And you don't need these headers to pull in stuff into this header so that it can be pulled into other stuff downstream. No, 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 no. You just need the handle and you need the functions. That's it. So let me uh, open up a render state compare. Clear. Give me something that doesn't use too much. That doesn't. Oh, right. Uh, I've changed back to the main branch, so I don't have stuff from the render system done quite yet. So here we go. We're going to have to do it the old fashioned way. So, you know what? Just up here. Result H. I need to include both handle.h, bow define handle, bow physics. System result set create system. Uh, yeah, it's not really great, but hey, whatever. Bow physics system star p physics system. Okay, we've got that. I need to do the initialize, deinitialize, and the process calls. Very generic, but so physics deinitialize system. Like that, we need to pass that in each time. I do need to include the resource pool. Okay, I need the resource pool. I need the rigid body pool and the position 3D pool. That's all I need for this. Okay, let's grab this. Okay. Oh, and I need to export these things. Okay. 
that means on the system side, here we go, where I need namespace stuff. I can move this stuff to the initialize, deinitialize. I don't actually need these things to be created until that point. So let's get rid of the export. Let's do, let's just kind of grab these, I guess. That'll merge like that. Don't actually need that. We do need this stuff brought over to here. All right. So this is basically all public now. So I'll change that to a struct physics system. So uh, the creation. Create call is here. New standard no throw of can I type that if the new physics. Okay, change that to be just this. So it's internalized. P new physics system. Error out of memory, the typical thing. Um, otherwise, star p uh, physics system equals. Oh, I need to do the row define handle casts. So we want that. So equals physics system to handle of p physics system. Turn to foe result of physics success. Hmm. There we go. Okay, we got that, and then the other side is to destroy it, so just kind of grab that. We get that. Is there anything I need to destroy or delete at this point? This will all be handled by the, the, the deinitialize. And all these are C++. So they'll be automatically done on the destroy. So I could just run delete. P physics system. Okay. So got that. This stuff is going to become basically copy this down to the M waiting loading resources is after that. So let's do it about here. Uh, Equals, 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 equals. And the world uh, has the gravity set to that, okay. Got an extra something going on here. Let me go through this. 
Deinitialize is going going the other way. So we've got that. We're going to remove object. Does remove object actually? It does remove from the world. So the deinitialization of uh, the destruction of these things in the opposite order has to happen the other way. So after this point. From the world. Let's uh, split that to the right. So I can actually get the exact list. So MP world reset. MP solver dot reset. Okay, we got that. Clear that. So let me kind of put that like this, copy and paste this so that it'll actually use. So the idea is, of course, it's going to, at the moment while I'm still developing it or changing it over, it's just going to call p physics system lies with resource pool and all the other components like that and it's going to return now should say Got the deinitialize, and then we'll have the processing. That's a bit more the correct uh, nomenclature. Time elapsed rather than time passed, I would think. Unless I'm going to hold, like, I'm not sure if it'll be one world or multiple worlds that you can run in, like, parallel. I don't know. Or if there's time dilation between different world sections of, okay, this probably just needs to change to, like, dot reset, like this, right? Yeah, okay. Great, so we got that. Deinitialize, very much the same thing. Uh, physics system process. And then we got this. And we have this. So these things are going to be put into the anonymous namespace now. Okay. We do, uh, of course, I need to actually change up. Uh, this is now just a plain, like there's no C++ elements. They're all just regular H's, regular C style headers. So we'll do that. This changes to that. Means a change in this. All right. Yes, do that. Great. Moving on down to the actual problem points here. So this becomes a physics system. It's not a pointer anymore. It's 
system. Keep initialize system of that. Passing in system is the first parameter. We got that's that. I need to update the create and destroy because it's no longer no longer uh, the full object. It's just a an opaque handle. Loader components system. Here we go. So do 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 do. There's there it is. So we want to do result equals foe create. Sorry, foe. Physics create system is um, star, which is create, sorry, reference do, uh, of create info, well, T system, whoop, like that. If not equals to success. And it just does that instead. This is removed as well. And then up above will be the destroy call. Loaders, components, systems. It'll be here. System. Oh. Six destroy system. Okay. Where else are we going to have problems? We're going to have what? Um, That's looking at the location. Okay, that also means the process call up here is that. So I'm not doing process. We're doing pro physics process system. Time elapsed in seconds. Okay. Do that. Now that should realistically just kind of be doing the exact same thing. Up, oh, okay. Do a memory check. It's up to the top, the end, no new changes. Wonderful. So we've got that. Uh, I did change this to be H, right? H, 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 23, okay. That was this year, okay. So, now, next. Uh, I need, want, rather, to change this to actually be down here in the actual call. Rather than having that extra level of indirection. So we'll do this here. So we have that. Like this. Can we just like that, 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 that. Mm-hmm. Make sure no issues, no big issues. Wonderful. 
Next one is deinitialize. So that's these two gone. Run it, make sure there's no issues. Okay, wonderful. And then finally, the physics one. Then we have the add and remove object, which I'll kind of anonymize in the namespace as they already sit. So is there, I, do I actually return anything? I do not, I should return something even if i'm returning literally always success do that and on the header side turn that can i please modify it so i can do that That just means I need to do the P physics pointer thing. Time elapsed. Okay, so what's the system look like so far? It's been changed a lot, and it's a bit larger. But also that's because like the this has been shifted over to the other side as well. Hmm. But it's more encapsulated than it was. So I that's a thing I'm willing to take. So now for the add and remove object, how does this? Okay, what do I need in add object? What is the thing that I'm using. I have the rigid body pool, position pool, resource pool, the waiting resources, and the world. Hmm. Hmm. Well, okay. At least uh, it won't be too. For now, it won't be too bad because I can just pass in uh, the physics system as it is right now, and I'll just prefix that to a number of locations. So we do that. Add a world object. I'll call it. I think. So I'll just do this. Like that. And then I can refine it with a better... Probably sometime in the future. Or not. I mean, this is just uh, hidden away inside the source. So there's no real requirement. Um, so we just kind of do the same thing here, right? Yeah. Or rather, what's going to probably happen is what is most probably going to happen is as, 
as part of this, the component, the uh, like I said earlier, the rigid body, like the runtime data, will be split off into like a separate list vector or something like that. That will be internal to the system, much like in render system. So like a lot of this, like uh, a lot of this will be actually simplified at that point, but it isn't quite yet. I'm still kind of like converting it to current how I think of things. So that's not quite. Oh yeah, these are gone. Now it's just, it, it, it just is a structure. So that's nice. We'll just kind of simplify it down to like that. All four locations are like that. Okay. There it is. Okay. Empty. Let's just double check. Quick rapid fire. Yes, no extra new leaks. That's great. So, with all of that out of the way, got a few more lines of code in there. Oh, because the length is probably moving things around a little bit. But it is, to my mind, a bit simpler to, to uh, deal with. Everything's just kind of contained in here instead. Now, I don't need result age. Let's get rid of a few of these. So result age, don't, I don't need that. ID, ID to string. Body, I don't need this. Collision shape, yes. Type deaths, I don't think so. No, I did need that one. Resource pool, I already got that from elsewhere. Resource H, probably need. Log result, memory vector. Okay. So with that, at this point, now I now I get to actually do the uh, interesting work, which is to modernize and split up this data. So let me go grab a drink and BRB. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, clear that I committed that stuff for up to this point. So at this point, now I need the like runtime structure data struct that I'm going to work with, which will be, I'll call like, um, active world object, I guess, which is going to consist of a BT rigid body star, B rigid body, and it will actually include the resource of whatever it is. So full resource at um, collision shape. And maybe I can also do like the mass. No, I could probably determine. Maybe I'll do the mass. Float mass. I'm not sure if the mass, if I can grab the mass back out of the rigid body easily or not. So I'll figure that out. And so what's going to happen is when we have that, we'll have the standard vector of active world objects. Next world objects, there we go. So, 
what is going to happen is we have this entity rigid body position collision shape. Okay. So something I'd have to do also quite possibly is to figure out what, okay. Obviously it's not going to be very efficient uh, to have to search every time I want to add an object, but I'm going to do that anyways for now. So what we got, we got that P rigid body equals that. Okay. So this is the old, this will be the new. So active world object. Going to equal what I have in P collision shape equals collision shape, which is the resource dot mass equals E rigid body mass and dot P rich body equals new BT no throw of BT rigid body, which takes in the rigid body CI. Uh, do I require new? for the no throw. We have to do this. Um, not great. I don't know. Standard no throw. Okay, internet, tell me how I'm doing this wrong. No, it is part of the new header. New standard no throw. Okay, I'll have to figure this out. Okay, that. <clears throat> uh, what I want to do is I'd have to find auto insert iterator equals. So again, much like with the render system, the active world objects will be in entity order. So it's a very quick-ish uh, binary search. through the physics system or active world objects dot begin the physics system active world objects dot end of course i'll you know move this to be more efficient later but that's later i just want to get the basics done let's include algorithm well that uh new is gone We're still here, and I'm looking for entity. And it's going to require a custom type, so auto. And a, I believe this is the active world object. And then fo entity ID. Ah, yeah, I'll, I'll have to add that as well to it. So we got that uh, object return object. Uh, entity is less than entity. I believe that's. Let me just double check on uh, the internet what exactly the lower bound custom lower bound function is. Uh, yes, it is that way. So I find it, and wherever it is. I need to add it. I'm assuming it's not already in it, so I'm adding it. Yeah. Hmm. Um, at insert iterator, we're adding. 
There's no point to doing move. I don't need to actually add it. Add that. That state has moved over there. Okay. And then when we're here, to remove. We're not doing it that way. So get rid of the old stuff. We're not touching the rigid body anymore. We're not doing this here either. We need to do this. Search iterator. Actually call it that instead. We're looking for it. We're looking for the entity. If search iterator entity equals entity. Or if, yeah, if it's not equal to the entity, it's not here, don't care. Otherwise, I need to do, I need to do search iterator that, remove that, we delete that, and then we, the physics system, that's for the objects dot erase. Search iterator. So do I actually have a P okay pointer P rigid body? Uh we're not here. We need this. Okay, so this doesn't actually matter anymore. So we need that. We do this, we do this. Okay, what I probably actually want to do is I'll move this up, way up. Find this first. If search iterator entity, then we just return as it is. Ready. It. Okay. Uh, where's the next point? Yes, yes. And maybe what's going on here? Copy position data to position both 3D objects. So this is after this point. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So we're not going through the rigid body pool anymore. We're just going to be going through mm -hmm. We're just iterating through all of these objects. So four auto const and give world world object. And P physics system world objects. So all of these are active world objects, so and they're all going to have a position. And it's going to be not this, but entity. One, two. Sorry, where am I now? Oh, I'm way up at the top again. Okay. Why? Oh, this should be a dot. The reference, not a pointer. P data rigid body. Okay, so now I'm just like, it's um. Object dot p rigid body get will transform. Okay, what else we got going on down up here? The entity. What was the thing? I oh, I don't need the data anymore, right? P 
Yeah, I don't need this data anymore. That's one less thing to iterate through. Same thing here. Okay, how does that work, if at all? It doesn't work at all. So if, oh yeah, if search iterator not equal, um, the end iterator and search iterator, iterator equals that, then return. So if or sorry, search iterator equals that. <clears throat> this is just a search iterator, not the actual yeah. And if that equals the end or did not equal that, then we can return early. Otherwise continue on. Okay. Okay, so that did not work. So let's see why. So I'm presuming I'm, I'm going to be going through this twice, right? So I've got two of these objects. Let's iterate through them. Okay, first one. Uh, this will be like on to the end. This is not the end. That's great. I'm getting position data, okay. So I have that. And the thing with the collision shape, okay. Hmm. Go through again, it'll be the kind of the same thing. Okay, so I'm assuming that eventually I do come through to this point. Yes, I do. Collision shape, great. Rigid body CI, that's great. We are adding the stuff. It is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And we insert it to this. So we now have that which has this entity. Okay, it doesn't actually. Okay, so I am assuming that I'm going through I'm going through this twice, right? And then after that I'll go through to actually processing the world. So this is the first new object, entity, collision shape, rigid body. Okay. Then a different one with the massive one. Great. Then we move on down to processing of the actual world, and we go down to here. So we're here. Great. We have the active world object. Three eighty six. We go. It exists. Okay, we are updating it. Seemingly basically every frame. Oh! Now it's working? Okay, it, it is working. Okay, I guess. So that should mean 
I can go into the rigid body. I can scrap this point, this runtime data pointer. Scrap this. Simplify that type. No breakages anywhere else, right? Very nice. Very nice and simple. Um, anything else I can do? Oh, of course, I need to do uh, on the system. When I add and remove, I need to actually like add and remove. Uh... Hmm. I need to register and deregister, like increment and decrement the use reference of the collision shape, which I'm not doing right now. I'm just loading it and just kind of keeping it at zero. I'm not actually doing what I should be doing. Um, I mean, I guess I can keep doing it every time. I Like I can add it, decrement it based on this point, at least. Oh, resource, increment, ref count of, of collision shape. Okay, I'll just kind of put it there for the moment. And then on the other side, I need to remove the rigid body and then I decrement it. Decrement. Make sure I'm not getting any issues from that. Okay, um, any errors or warnings about resource mismanagement? Uh, yes. Here. That, so each 11 and 11, I am... Is this hex? I think is this hex? Or like now what is OL8? That's something else, isn't it? Uh, resource, resource. Can I non boned mesh vertex shader and O6. It's a couple of vertex shaders that I'm not actually removing. Okay, so that's not I don't yeah, make a note of that. What was it protect shaders? Vertex shader use count. All right. Uh, Okay, the thing I'm looking for, 011. Where are you? Okay, here, unloading normally. That's fine. Okay. So the one I'm working with is fine. Although I don't really like the uh, where it's being located. So I think I'll kind of call it early there because the rest of this is pretty straightforward. What's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to uh, add checks for modifications like when the so like of course okay i need to add a modified entity list for positions that are changed via this so the other systems know hey they you know this was changed by this system check this entity out or this entity's position component out um i need to check for i have removals and i have insertions but i need a check i need to do uh, things when the both when the position itself is mo uh, is modified by another system other than this one and uh, when the rigid body 
is uh, component is changed. You know, where the mass is changed or the collision shape has been changed. So I need to like do some stuff around that. But again, those are pretty straightforward. Like if you've seen the render system, it's basically more of the same. I just I load in the raw, the raw data. I load in the new data. Is it different? If yes, overwrite. Move on. Um, and if it's resource based, then of course like unload the current data if it is unloaded or loading or failed to load. Or if it's already loaded, then just switch immediately kind of thing. Yeah. So that'll be it for... I'll do all that offline, and I'll rename these to be a bit less C++-y with the M member prefixes. And next time, I have no idea, I have no idea what I'll do. So yeah, until next time, cheers.